Book of Esther, Chapter 1, The King's Banquets. Now it came to pass in the days of in the days of Asuras, this is Asuras which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over a hundred and seven and twenty provinces, that in those days when the king Asuras sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the place, palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants. The power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. When he shewed the riches of his glorious kingdom, the honor of his excellent, excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and fourscore days, and when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shahan, the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver. Upon the pa a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble, and they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, and royal wine in abundance according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law, None did compel, for so the king had appointed to all the officers in his house, that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vasti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Osiris. Queen Vasti's refusal. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mahmud <coughs> Bazda, Harbona, Bigda, and Abada, Z Zatar, and Caracas, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Asar the king, to bring Vasti the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was far, fair to look on. The queen, But the queen Vasti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. The next, then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. And the next unto him was Karshana, Shahar, Ahmad, Tarshish, Mirs, Marsana, and Memukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media which saw the king's face and which sat the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen? Vastai, according to the law, because she had not performed the commandment of the king, Asars, by the chamberlains? The Mamakan answered, Before the king and the princes, Vashti, the queen, had not done wrong to the king only, but also to the, all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Asars. For this deed the, of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. When it shall be reported, the king Asterisk commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the dead of the queen, Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath.
If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Meds, that it be not altered. The Vasti come no more before King Asrus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princess, and the king did according to the word of Mamukon. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, and that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Chapter 2 Esther Chosen Queen After these things, when the wrath of King Asuras was appeased, he remembered Vasti and what she had done, and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, Let there be fair young virgins sought for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Sashun the palace, to the house of the woman, unto custody of Hedge, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their king things for purification be given them. And let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vasti, and the thing please the th king, and he did so. Now in Shuhan the palace there was a certain Jew whose name was Morabkai, the son of Jair, the son of Shammai, the son of Kish, a Bethzamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jonah king of Judah from Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away and he brought up Ahasadah that is Esther his uncle's daughter for she had not neither father nor mother and the maid was fair and beautiful whom Morsegat when her father and mother were dead took her took for his own daughter so it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shahashan, the palace, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house, to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women, and maiden pleased him. And she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her gave her things for purification, which such things as belonged to her and seven maidens, which were meet to be given her. Out of the king's house he preferred her her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. Esther had not shewed her people nor her kindred, for Morakai had charged her that she should not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did, and what should become of her. Now, when every ma maid's turn was come to go in to King Asher's, after that she had been twelve months, according to the manner of the women. For, for so were the days of the purification accomplished, to wit six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with sweet odors, and with other things for the purifying of the women. Then thus came every maiden unto the king, whatsoever she desired, 
was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned unto the second house of the women, to the custody of Shagai, the king's chamberlain, which keep the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she were called by name. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abella, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, had come to go in unto the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all, all of them, that looked upon her. And Esther was taken into King Hazarus unto his house <coughs> royal in the tenth month, which is the month of Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight, more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants. Even Esther's feast he made a release <coughs> to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. Morshadai discovers a plot. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Esther had not yet shewed her kindred, nor her people, nor Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she brought up with him. In those days, while Mordecai sat, sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains be back on Teresh of those which kept the door were wroth and sought to lay hand on the king Asherah. And the king and the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen. And Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. Chapter 3 Haman Plots Against the Jews After these things did King Asuras promote Haman, a son of Hamadah the Agonite, and advanced him, and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, not nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants which were in the king's gate said unto Mordecai, Why transgress it, though the king's commandment? Now it came to pass when they spoke daily unto him, he heard heart he hearkened not unto him, dumb, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw the Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Asher, even the people of Mordecai. In the first month, that is the month of Nis Nisan, 
in the twelfth year of King As Asroth, they cast Pur, that is, the lot, before Haman, from day to day and from month to month, to the twelfth month, and that is the month of Adar. And Haman said unto King Azarus, There is a certain people scattered abroad, and dispersed among the people to all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep thy the king's laws, therefore it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written, that they may be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents worth of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business, to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadiah, the Agonite, the Jew's enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee the people also to do with them as it seemed good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called it on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded, unto the king's lieutenants, and to the governors that were over every province, and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing, thereof, and to every people after their language. In the name of King Azarus was, was it written and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters, the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, to take the spoil of them for a prey. The copy of the written of for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, that they should be ready against that day. The posts were out being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given to in Shushan, the, the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shuhan was perplexed. Chapter 4 Esther agrees to help the Jews. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes, and went out into the midst of the city, and cried with a cry, that with, cried with a loud and bitter cry and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, wherever the king's commandment and his decree name, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many laid in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it to her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent Ramnan to clothe Mordecai, and to take away his sackcloth from him, but his received it not. Then called Esther for Hascot, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what is was and why it was. So Hatchai went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews, to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given to Shehan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king, to make supplication unto him, and to make requests before him for her people. 
And Hatshai came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spoke unto Hatshai and gave him the commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whatsoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the king, into the king, into the intercourt, who is not called, there is one law of this to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king of these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to Esther, Esther, think not with myself, thyself, that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For it, thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade him return Mordecai this answer, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Chapter 5 Esther Prepares a Banquet Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther, Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so, and when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained a favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Esther, queen? And what is thy request? It shall be even given thee to the half of the kingdom. And Esther answered, If it had seemed good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther had said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? Even to half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Then Esther then, es then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is, If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if I please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let king and Haman come to the banquet, and I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king had said. Haman plans to hang Mordecai. Then went Haman forth that day, day joyful and that with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood, stood not up, nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends, and Zaras his wife. And Haman told him of the glory of his riches, and the multitude of his children, and all the things wherein the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the princes 
and servants of the king. Haman said moreover, Yes, Esther the queen did let no man come in the king unto the banquet and she, that she had prepared but myself and to Mora. Am I invited unto her also with the king? Yet all this availed me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the gate, king's gate. Then said Zeresh his wife, All his friends unto him, let as gallows be made fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak go unto the king, that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go, go merrily with king into the banquet, and the thing pleased Hammond, and he caused the gallows to be made.
I'm building up a high tower Made up of the foolish things I've done In reaching for the sun It's made up of wood, hay and stubble And now I am afraid it will crumble down Oh Lord, what have I done? Unless the Lord builds this house, we labor in vain. This frail body is the temple of the Lord. So I'll sacrifice my heart and soul for the glory of your name. I will build for you this temple in. My soul Lord, I'm giving up my power And trusting in the flesh for what I've done Now I'm reaching for your Son And I will build with gold and silver Forever to endure the fire of your holy righteous throne. For unless the Lord builds this house, we labor in vain. This frail body is the temple of the Lord. So I'll sacrifice my heart and soul. For the glory of your name I will build for you This temple in my soul Oh, I am waiting for That city Whose builder is our God I turn my back on Babylon Toward New Jerusalem Prepared for all the saints and angels Glory forever ah, Amen Amen For unless the Lord builds this house We labor in vain This frail body is the temple of the Lord So I'll sacrifice my heart and soul For the glory of your name I will build for you